Hello to you, a fine, uh, a fine spring day today we've got, so what better chance than to get out for a, a little bit of a railway explore. So we're in South Yorkshire, uh, te well, technically we're in Rotherham, we'll say Sheffield, but we're actually in Rotherham and we're in a little village called Treaton. Um, got Orgreave Colliery over in that direction, um, which is now, you'll know it's a little village called Waverley. Got the River Rother just underneath us there. We've got what we've come to look at today. Got John with me today. Yeah, yeah. Sheffield so, District Railway. The Sheffield District Railway. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to be starting looking, we're going to be getting on it at Treaton, uh, which is where we are now, following it through Catcliffe. It's then it then went through what was the Tinsley Marshalling Yard, a massive marshalling yard, um, before it came out over near Meadowall. A bit of housekeeping before we get going. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you might have seen the ones I did on the Lancashire, Derbyshire and East Coast Railway, abbreviated to LDECR, Baton Branch, or Sheffield Branch as it was known. In fact, I finished my explore of the length of the Baton Branch only a few months ago. We saw that at Baton in the southeast of Sheffield, the line joined the Midland Railway right by the side of what is now Rother Valley Country Park. In the purest sense of the LD and ECR, that was indeed where the line ended. But obviously Baton Junction wouldn't really be a suitable destination. So here's the next chapter in the story of the history of the LD and ECR. The term Sheffield Branch instead of Baton Branch becomes more relevant in this new mini-series on the Sheffield District Railway. If you know the railway geography of Sheffield, you might be thinking, why didn't the LD and ECR just continue down what is now the route through Woodhouse and into Sheffield? That does look easier and quicker on paper, but the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway, who owned that line, which later became the Great Central Railway, were opposed to the LD and ECR and objected to their extension into Sheffield. Ironically, the LD and ECR was later absorbed into the Great Central Railway. It's been a while since I've seen John, a couple of months with his yeah, Gegby, didn't Skegby we? Yeah. And the weather couldn't be any more different, could it? <laughs> that was a freezing day and freezing. wet underfoot and yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> different today. It must be, I reckon we're in for a high teens day today, which is warm enough for me. So from Baton Junction, the line joined the Midland Railway Old Road down through the Rother Valley towards Rotherham. The term Old Road is one you'll hear me use a few times today. This is the name given to the Chesterfield to Rotherham line by Barrowill, now basically a Sheffield avoiding line used by freight trains. When we reach Treaton, our 3.5 mile Sheffield District Railway begins. In this video, part one, we're going to look at the disused section that runs from Treaton Junction, the Triangle and the run through Catcliffe. We'll cover the Tinsley and Meadowell areas in part two. So this is Treaton South Junction and you'll see the Sheffield District Railway veering off to the left. You'll see the Treaton Colliery branch line there just crossing over the top of the junction and we can still see a couple of bridge abutments from that old colliery line. But we're nearly four minutes in and I feel like I've been waffling for ages so I'll hand you down and we'll start the railway explore. Right so there's our bridge abutment, another one over the other side of the line over there as well. So don't worry, we're not on the side of the railway. We are the other side of a uh, other side of a steel steel fence. So this is where the, the journey really starts for the Sheffield and District Railway, right here at this point. Um, the sun in shot here. Oh, got a signal. Look at that old signal gantry stud. I can only see it from this side though, so I'm sorry you are after. It's going to be a bit of a silhouette. So you can see in the distance there, that's going up towards Baton Junction, Barrow Hill and Chesterfield in that direction there, on the, on that live line. So yeah, so this is, I think it's called Treaton Junction. This is the start of the triangle and this is where our Sheffield District Railway left. The Midland Railway. But yeah, so this, look at this, this is a track bed. Loads of ballast. And this hasn't actually been closed that long. I reckon it's been 10 years, I'm, I'm guessing. I, I remember in recent history, there been lines left on this. And we've still got quite a lot, a lot of sleepers down here. Track fasteners still on there. I can't see a date on that one, John. Oh, no, 1964. 
plenty of wooden wooden sleepers so yeah this is this is the trap bed so just for some perspective this is heading towards um that viaduct over catcliffe and in to what was the tinsley tinsley marshalling yard Plenty of sleepers, wooden sleepers. So we're still on the triangle. We're on the, I don't know, what would you call the west side of the triangle yeah, now? I guess the south. Southwest. Yeah, south. Yeah, no one's had all these yeah, yeah, trap fasteners. Someone weighed them in at some stage. First couple of concrete sleepers. Yeah, and it looks like someone's had a bit of a fire here. Got a few bits in there. So we're still heading off in the in the direction of Catcliffe now. The numbers on it would suggest it's something electrical. It is, it is ceramic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. If anyone knows what this might be. So we've come to the junction there and it's probably best to explain this situation with a quick look at the map. So here's a close up on rail map online at the triangle that I keep referring to. We've been walking up this south curve from Treaton Junction to Catcliffe Junction which is the original alignment of the Sheffield District Railway. Now you'll see the north curve, which is coloured black on this map. And I've left satellite imagery off just so it's easier to see that black line. Now black means that it opened under the British Rail era. And I'm unsure exactly when this opened, but I would guess it was part of the Tinsley modernisation in the 1960s. But as always, if anyone knows the dates when this or the previous lines we've been looking at actually closed, then do drop us a comment. So that's where we've just come from that direction going back towards Treaton Way um, and that's the other side of the triangle now that I suppose it goes heads off towards the middle and old road in a, for the northbound northbound train so are we having a look down here yeah we John yeah. Yeah, yeah let's have a look what we can find down here steel and what sticking out there sleepers embedded in the ground in this one I'm really I'm really quite I'm really quite amazed on the amount of stuff we've seen so far. Given I only lived about three three miles, not even four miles down the river, rather, um, in Baton. I've never I've never ever and I've run in this area, it's part of one of my running routes. Um and I've never been never been down here. I didn't realise that there was there was this much of a disused railway to see. Get through the trees, we've got the base of a base of a signal. So it's common sense really, it goes without without saying. Around a junction you're gonna find lots of infrastructure generally. Uh, and there's a second signal post just on the other side of the lines there. That's a cable ducting I can see as well. So I'm just looking, um, looking for some dates on some of the sleepers and some of the, the track the track plates. Not seeing any any dates though. This line was was opened later than the other side of the triangle this if you look at the old well if you look at rail map online it does say this was a, a line that was opened in british rail days it's a tesco train just in front there so that's on the Middle and old road. It's the end of that, and that brings us nicely to that little end of that little triangle. I see the M1 motorway in front as well. Yeah, so this is the other side. This is looking north 
on the old road now. And obviously that's the other side of the of the triangle. So that's the that's the triangle around Treaton ticked off. So we'll head up and, uh, and pick up the line now, going up towards Catcliffe. You can still see that line of sleepers there heading towards heading towards the main line. So back up at uh, the north side, north side of the triangle there. Just going off in that direction there, we've got Catcliffe. Um, Catcliffe Viaduct, more on that in a moment, but we've got nice long sleepers here, obviously because we're at the cusp of the junction, big long ones. Have you found, Jan? Not particularly exciting, it's just a fence post. Oh, it's <laughs> a, a fence, fence post. post. <laughs> well done. It does show you the line, I guess. <laughs> so, a couple of, couple of line side installation boxes here, look at that, you can see the See the concrete foundations are sat on, sat on there. So just, just alongside those um, electrical boxes, a little bit of drainage here. Something, uh, another, another fire. Quite a lot of fires along, along this route. It's like you've got. I'm assuming that's part of the old, part of the old viaduct there. I think they, yeah, they are sleepers. Look, they've got the, they've got the holes in. And I was just a bit intrigued. I wasn't sure what I was looking at because this one's got still got the things attached there. And here's the start, or here's the we're at the start, the viaduct there. You can just see poking through the trees. So John's just spotted this right on the right on the entrance. To the viaduct where high voltage electric cables coming out there I assume so I didn't actually realize you could get onto the viaduct to be honest there's no signs there is a gap in the fence that's wide enough for even me so this is this is the viaduct over Catcliffe if you've ever driven through Catcliffe or you know Catcliffe you'll, you'll probably know this viaduct it's not a massively long one. I think it goes over, goes over the road and the river, river rather. Little refuge point. Lots of thorns on this top of this viaduct, as we're, as we're finding out. And there's the river rather down there. Look, you get a good view of the side of the viaduct. Let's see if I can count the arches from here. One, two, three. Four. No, I can't. It goes in a curve. I was in bed this morning reading my book. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Nine arches. Nine. We'll count them and check to make sure he's right. <laughs> so this is this is a bit of south, south end of the viaduct there where we started it. Did you did you count the arches, John? Nine. Nine. Two there. Yeah, it doesn't help that you can't see all the arches from one place. Mind you, I had trouble counting five weirs on the River Don, so <laughs> don't ask me to be counting arches. So that's looking back down down the, the viaducts where we've just just walked. Can still see there's Waverley on the old Orgreave site there. Just in front, them new houses. Get a good view of the road there. Cut cliff down below. It does look like we can get out this side as well. So someone unwittingly, correct or incorrect, has made this ride up to a through route now, which is a bonus because I didn't think we'd be able to get on here. So onwards we go towards uh, towards the site of the old Tinsley Tinsley Marshalling Yard. So it's coming up to the site of Catcliffe Railway Station. I think this one stopped serving passengers in 1939, That's correct. like the others on the LD ECR, didn't it? When that yeah. that service was withdrawn, so it was the LD ECR, which we know from further up the other side of Baton. Um, 
that use this line for passenger services. And so John's just been saying a little bit about um, about Catcliffe Station. So what what we what were you saying, John? It is. It was known to be exceedingly cold, <laughs> and it's basically two wooden platforms and wooden structures. Closed in 1939. There we go. So. If anyone's ever filled up at Catcliffe Morrison's petrol station in the winter, they'll know exactly what cold and windy is if you've ever jumped out of the car in your in your t-shirt. So just spot on the side of the road there. Another electrical box. You can see wires, wires sticking out there. I can't get any closer though, unfortunately. So this is Station Road, a little loop, a loop here, so Station would have just been here, oh, just on the side of the trap bed here. Could have happily made this, uh, this video of 40 minutes of uh, walking through sleepers, just keeping an eye out. And the undergrowth as they always do, look at this, try to get closer and zoom. This is from a set of points. Look at that, we've still got the, I don't know, is it hydraulic barrel? Is that the right term down there? All the gear. Amazing that's survived so well. I can't get any closer though, I'm hanging into a tree here. Tell a lie, I fought my way a little bit further in into the shrubbery just to show you that. Just to show you that cylinder there. All the arms across. Assuming that would be the um, control motor, it's got a big cable hanging out the back of it there. Another base of a signal. More electric junction boxes here, so we were obviously around around a junction. Still got some some bobs inside this one. Look. So yeah, that, this is what we saw further up the line, John. These little uh, yeah, we did think they were they were electrical. We were correct. Another one there. That's just a shell, and then one on its. One on its side here, and this is on a like a raised platform. You can see there. Not far off the Parkway, now Sheffield Parkway, uh, and obviously then straight after the Parkway, we used to have Tinsley Tinsley Depot in the yard. Got a concrete, concrete base, something here. More of those, more of those electric junction boxes, control boxes, I, I assume. Um, if I can get across there, we've also got another signal, signal post and base there. We've got about two foot of the bottom of the signal there. And if you can see in the trees there, So, right, we're coming up towards Tinsley Yard here, Sheffield Parkway Bridge over there. You'll notice there's a train right in front of us and that's, well, leads us nicely onto the next section of the video. Again, we're not trespassing, we've just come down the footpath. Yes, containers there, look, you can see in the distance there, we've got containers stacked up. Now they're either gonna be taken away or brought here by road or rail or vice versa and that's a bit of a celebrity locomotive that one that's the ukraine train painted in the uk flag it's 
So yeah, this is about as far as we're gonna as we're gonna go. Um, just having a look round now before we leave the old old line for now. There's an awful lot of stuff still here. Control units ducked in. Bases from posts. No idea what these are. Actually, are these are these from the old overhead overhead lines? Because I know this used used to be electrified. I mean, t to be honest with you, a little slightly before my era, I think the. the the Woodhead route was just closing just as I was coming into living memory but I do remember being taken down to Woff um, by my dad in the 1980s when I was really really young um, seeing all the seeing all the trains and things lined up there um, yeah and this was yeah the, the, this was electrified not for very not for very far in that direction but yeah this was uh yeah so and, and again any anyone got any more there's going to be people out there with far more knowledge than me people who've worked on the railways and and whatever in this area it'd be great to hear from people but yeah i'm 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 guessing that's what they were look at that that's been it's been cut off the top there so correct me if i'm wrong but i think that's from the old overhead equipment it's very rich, very rich in stuff left behind. This, another electrical. Again, it's got the wires coming out there. So much more in here. We are starting to see more undergrowth. Now that's got to impact. So this looks like something to do with, a, with points, I'm guessing. I see point kits in front. Oh, this is all stuff. This is like a yeah, it's yeah, loads here. I'm amazed how much stuff is still left down. Point work, this is the same, similar to what we saw just further up there. Uh. Is that a motor? <laughs> I'm no engineer, but I'm guessing. I'm sorry for showing you all the, the sort of, I see, feel like I'm showing you the same thing over and over again. Um, so much here, so much. But yeah, there's just more of these, these bases with the, with the steel, steel posts, steel girders cut off the top. But I am missing so much, <laughs> so much here. Want to come back to in January, again. Certainly. Yes, more of those. Nineteen fifty two. So that pretty much closes out the first section of this video. So that's live railway now for a little while in that direction. So we're not going to be doing that. We are going to be going and just talking a little bit about the Tinsley depot and the old Tinsley marshalling yard though as we just pass around the other side of it so that's the end of part one i hope you're enjoying the journey so far so coming up in part two we're going to be taking a look through the Tinsley marshalling yard as well as the original route of the Sheffield district railway which came out on the Midland railway at Brightside people will probably recognize it more as the area around Meadow Hall so we'll keep an eye out for that soon so as always thanks for watching part one Take care and I'll see you again soon.